So the Morgan Centre for the Research into Everyday Lives has a um, very strong reputation for working with quite creative and innovative qualitative research methods. Within our work and within that broader um, body of work which has moved towards a more visual approach, um, very few people, if, if any sociologists, have been working with observational sketching. One of the things that I was particularly excited about when I got the chance to do this residency was the opportunity to immerse myself in the same place, the same people, for an entire academic year. You know, it's been great to have Lynn effectively embedded in our research centre for a year, two days a week, uh, uh, capturing a year in the life of the centre, and that's been fantastic to see our, what we often think of as our quite mundane academic worlds reflected back at us. So I might first of all start by drawing the students because they're interesting me in the way in which they just look, in you know, the composition of the way they look. But then the lecturer might say something interesting and I might then just completely stop that and jump to the lecture and just make that fit together. You've got to select. You've got to decide that some things are more interesting than others. I, it's an unconscious process of selection and deselection. Um, and some of it's to do with what's being said and some of it's just to do with colour. A woman with gorgeous red hair that I just suddenly noticed towards the end, I thought, right, got to draw her. Yeah, I think one of the things that is interesting about sketching is, is you know, we all lead these incredibly busy lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you lot do. Um, rushing around, you've got loads of things in your head, you're always thinking about mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing next. What sketching does is it stops that train, that express train, yeah. and lets you get off in between stations mm -hmm. and just take a quick yeah. look around. Uh, hanging over this was the question as to why no one was really using in situ observational sketching as a method. From initial discussions with colleagues, I wondered if part of that was because we were all a bit terrified of exposing our, our inabilities. Could you learn techniques that would allow you to actually engage with those, with those methods in a way that was meaningful and useful in our work? One of the things that I've enjoyed about working with the Morgan Centre team is the incredible variety of projects that they're involved with. And one of those actually took me into a lab. I envisaged test tubes and things, but of course, if it was a modern lab, it didn't look like that at all. Well, for about seven years now, I've been studying a field called synthetic biology. And as a sociologist, I'm interested in how new ideas get made in science, how a new field emerges and consolidates and how it becomes mundane, but also how new technologies are produced in a laboratory all the way through to everyday society. So I have become a budding artist since Lynn got started in the Morgan Centre, but I wouldn't say that uh, it was something that I was comfortable with to begin with at all. A lot of what I'm doing is about being in the moment. It's about the process. And I think if you focus on the process and enjoying just doing what you're doing, what you get at the end may or may not be successful, but that kind of isn't the point. Yeah. And I think if you, if you can actually think in that way, it's very liberating. I think part of what Lynn's done really well is to help us get used to not being competent at something. And as academics, that can be quite a challenge because we're used to being experts in whatever it is that we spend our days doing. One example of that change that Lynn has brought to my work in terms of making me look at a space, in terms of making me look at the visual elements of the things that I study, has happened when I've been in the laboratory with her, for example. And in the process of trying to draw some of the things that they were doing, I managed to spill um, some substance all over my hands. <laughs> Once they'd cleaned me up, they gave me some blue plastic gloves to wear for the rest of the day to do my drawing in. And in the laboratory, she helped me see, for example, some of the more boring facts of being in a laboratory. Um, sometimes there's just stillness. Uh, sometimes there's whirring in the background. The noises, the atmosphere of a laboratory has kind of come to life through the visual sense, which was a bit surprising in some ways. I'm very interested in time. I'm interested in the idea that in a standard sketchbook you're just capturing a snapshot of time, one thing that happens maybe for two minutes, maybe for an hour. But with the concertina format you can actually have the passage of time far more easily represented. So I might take 
one particular event that goes across an entire day. And I can weave things that happen as they happen. I can tuck images together and bits of text and try and get that sense of the flow of the images reflecting the passing of time. So the Dormant Things Project uh, is very much rooted in Sophie's interest in material culture of the home. Um, Sophie is going into people's houses, rummaging through their cupboards, through their wardrobes, through their, through their kitchen drawers, and getting people to talk about what, what is in there and the things that have you know, lain there for years on end. But then we have this additional layer of, of Lynn going into some of those interviews and sketching what's going on. We focused in, in particular, on this particular image, <clears throat> which is just her children's painting palette. And it was just, you know, something they'd sat down and done together as, as a family, her and her children. And then she put it away, not knowing that that was the very last time that that was ever going to happen, because they then just grew. And she just couldn't bear to wash it, let alone throw it away. And so that was going to live in the cupboard forever. And there was such strong significance to that and resonance with it that the, the fact that I'd actually managed to get that across in the drawing got her really choked up. So I think that demonstrates that doing this actually does achieve something extra. was amazing to see was how people who felt they had no ability at sketching, had no confidence at sketching, producing some fantastic and really creative work. One of the ways in which we did that was to keep our own um, sketchbooks as individuals, but also we collectively had a whole set of concertina sketchbooks of our own, which we used in a, a bit like a chain, um, a chain sketch, sketchbook we called them. So over the course of the year these books have been passed around one, one person to the next. Uh, and they produce this beautiful sort of visual collage of how we've responded to those themes. Lynn also introduced people to the sketch crawl. One was in the town in Cheshire where one of the members lives and we all converged on that town square for a, a day of sketching. That was a very challenging experience. Being in the space of the, of, of, of the town square was, was very exposing for, for many of us. <laughs> it felt like we were breaking into the space, yeah. so it yes. felt like yeah. we were somehow disrupting the space by going and sitting down. And actually the initial sketching, like I sat there for quite a while thinking what can I sketch without being rude. Mm. And I'd noticed I didn't sketch anyone who was really close, mm -hmm. uh, particularly anyone sitting next to me because they kept looking over. Mm -hmm. uh, no one commented saying, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I think the sketch crawl has incredible potential as a, as a research technique, uh, and I think that is something we do want, definitely want to, to experiment with over the next 12 months. Particularly for colleagues who are working in very place-based work, the thought of bringing together either a group of academics or a group of, uh, of you know, just ordinary people from the local community to draw that location, to interpret that space, to talk about what it means to them, it seems really uh, empowering and uh, uh, sort of approach and one that is very participatory. Um, so in a way as a form of citizen social science. What was quite interesting that I didn't anticipate was the nature in which my techniques evolved over the year. So you arrive, you open your kit and you go. And there was a different kind of sketching that actually evolved from that. It's, it's taught us about the power of being able to engage in what Lynn often refers to as concentrated seeing, you know, really looking at, at the world in a, in a visual register. And that creates a space, I think, which is takes us away from the normal ways in which we, um, 
with, with which we're more familiar. So one of the projects that the laboratory that I'm studying at the moment is interested in is making menthol, which is a product, a chemical, that's in lots of everyday products like Vicks Vapor Rub, for example. And one of the nice things about taking Lynn both to the laboratory and into the everyday world to look at these uses of the products was that you get a sense of the difference of these two spaces, really, from Lynn's drawings. In the laboratory, everything's sort of like clean or white or ordered and the menthol seems very small and innocuous but in the everyday world menthol figures as part of things like family life where a mother and her kids for example will be using menthol in different ways than people might expect in a laboratory. I didn't really know what to expect when I got this opportunity. I had no idea what sociologists really do I really didn't know what the Morgan Centre physically looked like. I didn't know where they were going to take me. And so one of the things that excited me was the idea of the unknown that I was going to draw. And what's quite interesting is, of course, some of it I could have predicted, but I certainly would not have expected that I would find myself in a lab drawing a mass spectrometer. And I really didn't think that I'd be sitting on a stranger's carpet drawing the contents of their tea chest. I think what most of us are going to take from this is how useful it is to take time out, sometimes in relation to our research, definitely, but also just more generally to sort of take time out and reflect on the topics that we're interested in through this visual media because it takes us into this different headspace. It's difficult to think of a way in which you could actually record so many different activities, so many different people, and get a sense of an overview and a sense of what it feels like to be part of the team at the Morgan Centre. Because one of the things that I've really enjoyed is that I couldn't have been working with a nicer bunch of people. Learning how to, to, to think in a more visual register has been a very powerful lesson for all of us and one that I think, if, if nothing else, uh, for many of us has really made this such a powerful exercise and one that we'll want to continue to work with.